This is Dan Abbott, teach at Southern Maine Community College. This is lecture six in the series in CAD management, AEDD 260 at Southern Maine Community College. This um, presentation has to do with scripts, uh, an underutilized and underappreciated tool in AutoCAD, in my opinion, and one that you're going to need to master in order to complete your capstone project, which is the process of automating hundreds to thousands of drawings. This, this type of file is critical for that. You have two references to use for this, in addition, of course, to the help system in AutoCAD and anything else you can find on the internet. One is a PowerPoint that I used for a workshop that I did at Autodesk University some years ago uh, on scripts, and another is the chapter in your textbook, AutoCAD Secrets Every User Should Know, it's chapter 7. This chapter actually does cover the process of updating drawings of using scripts as a means of automating that process. We're not going to do that now. For now I just want you to use scripts to do some other kinds of things that you're going to run directly. Um, in order to, before we get into that though, let's take a look at AutoCAD and I'll just give you a sense of what kinds of power you have. And the beauty of this, by the way, is that scripts are in fact a very simple programming language. They are definitely programming languages, but most of the, most of what you would use in a script, and I mean most as in 98%, are going to be things you would otherwise type or could otherwise type at the AutoCAD command prompt in order to make things happen. So I have a brand new drawing here. If I look there, uh, there's one layer, layer zero, so I haven't added any layers to this yet. One thing you can use a script for is to set up a drawing in a certain way, and that would mean, really, you could do almost anything you want. Well, you could do very close to anything you want with a script. Um, and in, in this case, let's just say I wanted, for whatever reason, to have the entire AIA layer standards uh, placed into this drawing. I would go to the script command, and I'd find a script that I'd written that would allow me to do that. So I need to go find it, and it is 260. It is right here. Now this script is on my folder, or in one of my folders, it's not in a folder you have direct access to because I'm going to have you create some. I do give you some sample scripts. But this one, AIA layers with descriptions. I run this script. It's now done. When I type LA now, I just created using that script as though I had typed this at the command prompt. I just created every single layer that the American Institute of Architects recommends for the use of CAD systems with complete descriptions and everything, which was a tricky thing to do. And I will say that that tricky thing to do was solved by a student. I didn't actually come up with a script for putting the, the descriptions in. I had a student once who really wanted to be able to do that and just went and um, figured out how to do it. So that would take an enormous amount of work because one, you have to know what they are. So you'd have to have access to a list of them. And then in order to create those from the command line, and this is an important skill. If you're going to write a script or an AutoCAD program, you need to understand how something works from the command line before you do that. So how do I make a layer from the command prompt? Well, I go over here, type negative LA. Negative just means it, it suppresses the dialog box. It comes up. If I want to make a new layer or more than one new layer, I can use either make or new. If I use make it currently, it makes it makes one layer and it makes it the current layer. So I'll make new. So if I type N for new, then I can put some layer names in. Press enter. Then if I type C for color, I can say assign the color blue to layer one. That one is the name I just gave it. Color again, um, assign the color red to layer two. Color again, assign the, letter, the color green to layer 3. Line type, assign the line type hidden 2 to layer 1. One problem, by the way, with doing this in the command prompt, and one problem that you would have if you were setting up layers for a metric drawing, is that at the command prompt, when you assign a line type, it assigns it from the ACAD.LAN file, not from the ACAD.ISO.LAN file, even if what you've done is started a new drawing using the metric system. This is a little, um, I won't call it a glitch, but it's an oversight, I believe, in the use of the measurement value, a measurement of zero or one. And that is something that we can, we'll fix. In fact, let's think about fixing that when we start doing autoless programming. We can make it possible 
to create layers that have line types assigned from the ACAT ISO line type file. Um, but for right now, we're just dealing from the command line, so you're going to have to do this for the imperial system instead. When you're done doing all that, if you look at layers, I've just done exactly what I indicated the command line I wanted to do. Create a layer called 1, one called 2, one called 3, assign color to them, and assign line types. Imagine having to do that if you wanted to create those layers. You'd have to do that for every single layer. And then I didn't even bother to put in a description, which I could do up here. If I go back to layer, if I type, I'm assuming it's D for description, and say description of layer, and it says what layer do you want to apply it to, I apply it to layer 1, enter to get out of the layer, go back, and now, did I make a layer in this one, or did I make it in this one? Yeah, let me try, <laughs> let me do that in this. <laughs> I was in the wrong file when I did that. So now I'm in the drawing where I just created those three layers. Go back to layer command, say I want a description. Description for this layer. Layer one. Enter. And now I go over to layers. And now layer one, in addition to having a color assigned to it and a line type assigned to it, has a description for what it does. So all of those things can be done at the AutoCAD command prompt. But again, imagine having to do that for this many layers. Uh, I'm going to show you one other um, use for a script before we actually get into the, techni the um, technical elements of making a script. And that's something that I wrote a long time ago when I had a lab I was managing at school. We had one lab, and we had purchased 26 computers, and we had them built. They were built by a local company. Um, and when I say this was some time ago, I'm talking about probably 1994. And we had a problem, in my opinion, with three of the computers. They were all much, much slower in working with AutoCAD than all the other computers we'd purchased. The vendor actually said, no, I, that's not possible. It must be that the students using those computers are just slower. Well, I knew that wasn't true, but I needed to demonstrate it to them. So what I did is I wrote a script that would go through and do a number of things. And those are things that at the time were often difficult for the software to do. And the um, reason for doing that is I wanted to run that script on every single computer and then say to the vendor, look, this is the value I got in terms of how long it took to do that for 23 machines and three of them are far, far, far slower. Turns out there was a cache memory error and they did fix it. They were under warranty, but it took that in order to prove to them that we weren't just talking about students who were slow. So the script for that is called Bench Test Long. And I'm going to run it and just let you watch it go. What it is doing is to create a 3D model. A 3D model is creating as a cube, and then it is taking a sphere and subtracting it from the cube, then it's cutting the whole process, the whole piece in half. Then it's doing a 3D array, and the 3D array is 20 times 20 times 20, so it's creating 440,000 entities. And when it's done doing that, and you can probably see hide lines, it's gonna set up four viewports, which is what it's doing right now. Those four viewports show you the group that was just created. Then it's going to go into model space, and in model space, it's going to set up multiple views using the MV setup command. I think that's what I use. Um, and it's going to have a front view, a right side view, and a top view. It's going to have an isometric view as well. Um, and then when it's all done, it's going to come over here and tell me that the total ellipsed time for this was 54 seconds. So that took under a minute to create all those entities, go through set them up and do all those things. So this is all done with a script. It all happened while I was sitting here because I wrote a script explaining to AutoCAD exactly what I wanted it to do. We'll take a look at that script too a little later on. Um, there are all kinds of things you can do with scripts. The really good news, if you end up in an office that doesn't use AutoCAD but uses AutoCAD LT, which by the way is the most common CAD program that people purchase now. It's not AutoCAD itself, it's AutoCAD LT. However, most of the employments, most of the employment options you have in Maine 
are going to be using actually AutoCAD. So you have the option of using the tools we're going to be studying in here in um, any job you're likely to get. And if you do get a job involving AutoCAD LT, the good news is that these scripts will also run in LT as long as you're using commands that LT actually has. For instance, the script I just ran, which creates 3D objects, is not going to work in LT, and it's not going to work in LT because LT does not have any 3D entities. So let's go uh, right from scratch again. I'm going to start a new drawing. And let's go back to that idea of have, being able to set up layers. And by the way, you can set up layers. You can also set up text styles. You can also set up dimension styles, whatever you want. Now, the best way to do that, of course, is to do that in a template file that your office uses re religiously, so every single time you start a drawing. A script, though, is really helpful for that drawing that you didn't start with a template for whatever reason. So, again, I'm going to go through the process that I want you to go through. Let me just close out some of these things here. I'm going to go through the, the process that I want you to go through whenever you are doing anything where you're programming with AutoCAD. I want you to start by making sure you understand the command structure before you start trying to use the command. So once again, I'm now in a brand new drawing with only one layer, and that's layer zero. So I'm going to do a couple of things. One is I'm going to type negative style. It comes up and it asks me what name I want the style to be. And I'm going to say I want the style to be called Romanesque. Enter. Then it says, well, what font do you want to be used to, uh, want to be assigned to that? And I'm going to say, I want the Romanesque.shx font assigned to that. The text height, zero. The um, width factor, let's go with 0.8, just for the heck of it. The obliquing angle, well, let's take 10 degrees. And then, do I want it to be backwards? No. Upside down? No. Vertical? No. So what did I have to do to make that work? So if I open up AutoCAD's text screen by pressing F2, I go and just take a look and just make sure I know exactly what I did. So the first thing I had to do was indicate what the command was, that's negative style. Then I had to give it the name, and then I had to give it the font, and then I had to give it the height, and then I had to give it the width factor. Then I had to give an obliquing angle, and then enter, enter, enter to say, no, 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 I don't want all those things, and then it created a, a style for me. So knowing that, I can open up Notepad and start making a script file. So let's do that. I'm going to open Notepad. <clears throat> Bring it over here. Now there are a couple of ways I can do this. One of them actually would be to go up here and then copy everything here and then edit it. That gives me a lot of stuff I don't need, but at least I would make sure I had everything I needed in the sequence I needed it to be in. So let's uh, let's do that. So we'll copy that. I'll go back to Notepad and I'll paste it in. Now I'm going to go right from the top and I'm going to back up and do get rid of everything except what I typed first. Then I'm going to go in and get rid of everything except that. Now I need to make sure that I have only one line. I'll show you that why in just a minute. Then it asks me for the font name come back up here, get rid of everything except the font name. What do I want for a size? Text height, I want that to be 0. Width factor, I want that to be 0.8. Now I'm getting rid of these spare lines for a reason, and it's critical that you do this. Now, obliquing angle, I decide I want that to be 10. Display, no, and that is the default, so since it's the default, I'll just leave a blank, which is the equivalent of pressing the Enter key. Same thing here, I want the default, so I'll just leave a blank. So this first one is the Enter after 10, then I have an Enter, Enter, and I want one more Enter. So now I would end the script right here. So if I highlight this, and this is the trick that I want you to use to find out if you have any errors, because this is a very simple program. It has one, it's really, really picky in a way that most other programs aren't. A space or an enter or a new line would be seen in the script as though you pressed the enter key in AutoCAD. So going to a new line after styles like pressing the enter key. 
and then Roman S, you press the enter key. Roman S, S, H, X, you press the enter key. Zero, enter, point eight, enter, 10, enter. Then I wanted to go enter, enter, enter to accept the default. I don't have to accept the defaults. I could have just put no, no, no. But then I've got too many enters because I want to end this file with one last enter. Otherwise, it'll just keep trying to repeat my last command as AutoCAD sees each bare line as an enter. So if I highlight this, I don't want to see any spaces at the end, which would be seen as enters, and I don't want to see anything other than the cursor blinking at the end of the file. Now I'm going to save this, and I'll save it, and I'll just call that style.scr. And where am I putting it? In the student folder. Okay, I'll put it right there in, in our folder. Put it in 260, and I'll put it in the scripts folder. And I'm just in the scripts folder. So this is on the on our uh, common drive, on our Google Drive that you have access to. I'm going to put it there. It's called just because there are all kinds of other styles. Let's call it text style. So it looks like that. Now I've already done that in the first drawing. I did that from the command prompt. So if I go to style now, you notice that style is set. By the way, one thing I would want to do is make an annotator. So let's just, um, well, I'm first I'm going to try it, then I'm going to decide to modify it, then I'll go and modify it. So now I have a new drawing. If I go to style in the new drawing, it has AutoCAD's default setting, the uh, default styles of annotative and standard. I'm going to go to the script command, and in the script command, I'm going to go and find in your folder, the student folder, AD260, scripts, I'm going to find that style, that text style script, and I'm just going to run it. I go to ST now, it has created the Roman S file. Now, I'm thinking, gee, I'd like to make that annotative, how would I do that? Type negative style again, and then see what your options are. So let's say I wanted to make one called Arial. And then I come out, what do you want to do? Um, specify the file name, Arial.ttf. True type font, I believe that's true, we'll find out. Um, now, do I want it to be what uh, height do I want it to be? I type A here for annotative, and now it just sets it to an annotative height. Create annotative text style, yes. Match orientation to layout, no. Specify height of text. Now we're going back to the zero, zero, zero part. So I had to add those lines. Okay, now let's just see if it worked. If I come back up here, Arial, and it's based on Arial. You notice I had to type TTF. That is true type font. So there are two types of fonts, two types of fonts used by AutoCAD. SHX fonts, which are shape fonts, which are vector based, and TTF, which are true type fonts. They're Windows fonts and they're raster based. So that is how I'm going to make this annotative. So what would I do if I wanted to, to edit my script? I'd go back to the script command. I'm going to grab to the script notepad file and just above this I would insert the information necessary to do that. Annotative, did I forget what it was? Well, okay, so you forget what it is. So now you go back to AutoCAD, you go back to the text window and uh, when you get to the text window you highlight everything having to do with annotative entities. So the things that I didn't do before, things before that come before, what text site do you want, are right here. Copy those. Go back to the file that we've just created. I can paste those in here. <clears throat> and again, I, I can't include all that information right there. I've just got to indicate what I would have typed. So I would have typed the letter A. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to forget that sequence if I don't. I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to say no. Otherwise, it all stays the same. But if you're editing one of these, always do this when you're done and make sure there are no entities, I mean, there are no um, spaces at the end of each line and no additional spaces at the end. Now I'm going to add one more thing to this. What I'm going to add is a semicolon, which is the remark function. And I'm just going to indicate what it does creates a text style. Now I'm going to save it. 
and I'll go back and I'll go to a brand new drawing in this brand new drawing that has no styles created at all I'll go to the script command <clears throat> in the script command I will find text style run it go back to the style command and now not only do I have Roman S but it's an annotative style now let's go back and do some more things in that file and the more things I'm going to do in that file include when I'm all done creating the, the text style I'm going to put another little semicolon in here and I'm going to say creates layers so now I'll go to the negative LA command and I go through the process and once again probably a good idea <clears throat> me to go back to AutoCAD, type in negative LA, and then say, what am I going to do? Well, if you're going to make new layers and you want more than one, you type the letter N. You want the names of the new layers? Let's say I want a layer for dimensions, a layer for hidden lines, a layer for center lines, a layer for phantom lines, and a layer for object lines, and I want a, a three-character layer naming convention. Layers are all created. Now if I go back and do the line type, hidden two for the hidden layer LT again center two for the send layer LT again phantom two for the phantom layer and line weight 0.4 for the object layer and I could do the colors let's just go colors blue for the, for the dim layer so let's just say that's what we want and obviously you could do more than that again we're going to go back to the text screen and I'll copy everything that I did right up until I canceled so I'll start here and I'll just start copying up here and keep going until I get to the first thing that I did which was negative LA so I'll copy that go back to the notepad I've already got LA in there so when I paste it in I'll come back up. Yeah, you know, let's uh, do this. Let's use the actual command, negative layer. It's always a good idea. So now again, current layer is zero. Okay, well, that, we don't care. That's just some information it gave us. We're going to have to get rid of everything here right up until the option that we typed. So we typed N. Now these spaces you have to get rid of here because otherwise they're going to be see, seen as enters. So the new list of layer names that's what we typed next option LT so I'm going to pause this do the rest of this you can see what I'm doing when I'm done I'll have my my and in fact it wouldn't be a bad idea if all I did was highlight it like that and then did a delete in order to get that up there so again hidden line types gonna be assigned to hid we'll do the rest of them I will pause so I'm back having just done the same thing I was doing before. I just delete all the material that isn't something I would have typed. Now again, the um, semicolon acts as a, um, as a remark. So I'm just going to highlight everything in this file and make sure that there are no spaces at the end, and there aren't, and that there is only one extra enter at the end of this whole thing. I don't have that cursor, can't go down any further. So now I'm going to save this again, but now I'm going to save it and I'm going to give it the name Setup. So that's how I could set up a drawing. And I'll save it in the, yeah, I'm going to make it the all files just so it does save it as an SCR file. So I want to replace it. I um, already got one there. Don't know what it is, but I'm going to replace it anyway. So now, again, I'll go to a new file. And when I get to the new file, there's no layers in it. There's no style of any kind in it. I use the script command again. Go back and find my setup script, which I just created. And it goes through. Oh, one thing I didn't do. At the end of that file, I only had a single enter. Well, that meant I stayed in the layer command. And you can see in the command prompt, I'm still in the layer command. I have to press enter to get out of it. That's okay, but I can eliminate that in the script file by going back to the script file and adding at the end one more enter. 
and then I'll save that. That way I don't have to remember to press enter to get out of it when it runs. So now I look at my layers and I've got all those layers set up that I just created. If I look at the text style, I've got a text style called Roman S that is an annotative style. Now one other thing that I'm going to have you do when you do your assignment for this, and then we'll go on and take a look at a few other things on scripts. I'm going to have you set some variables. So let's just say you're running this on a drawing that you've brought in. And that drawing that you brought in has variables in it that were changed, and you're not sure why. And if you remember back to the puzzlers, there are times when you open something up and it doesn't work the way you want it to. Let's just say that you identified certain variables that sometimes get changed. So maybe one of them is called pick style. You know, maybe you want pick style set to one no matter what it's currently set for. Maybe you want pick first set to one no matter what it's currently set for. Maybe you want, and there's all kinds of other, aperture is another one, you know, it's currently set to 10. I actually like it set to five myself, so I'm going to make a change to that one. So those sorts of set variables, and those are system variables that control the way AutoCAD works, all of those can also be set in the script file. If I go back to this script, I come over here, so now I get back and go to the end of this, and again, I'm going to leave with the two spaces there because that's what gets me out of the layer command. And if I don't do that now, my next command won't run. So now I'm going to do another semicolon and just indicate that these are going to be variable settings. Come back down, pick first. Now, I'm going to do it a little differently. Instead of pressing enter and then putting the value, I'm going to put a space. Say pick first one. Pick add one. Aperture, and make sure you spell it correctly, we'll set that to five. Now again, I always, always in a script, go to the beginning, left click, hold down my uh, mouse and then drag it down and make sure that there are no spaces at the end of any line, that if there is a, a new entered space that it's there for a reason, in this case it's to get out of the layer command, and that the last place that that cursor is blinking is where I want it to blink. In this case, it's right at the end of the file. We'll save that again. And again, we'll go to a new drawing just so we're starting from scratch. I'll say, let's go to the script command. In the script command, let's do setup. I run the setup command and it goes through and you'll notice my aperture setting now is set to five. And the aperture setting involves how close do I have to be to something for an object snap to actually work. So if I have a line, and I say I want to draw another line, and I go over and say, let's get to the end point of this. Well, that's interesting. What are my object snaps set for? Oh, my object snaps aren't turned on at all. If I turn them on, none of them are set. So one of the things I could do is go and set my Osmode variable as well um, so that they come out right. And don't forget, my Osmode variable is something that I, well, you might not remember that, so let me just tell you. What is the Osmode variable? I'm going to go into Object Snap Settings, and I'm going to say I want Endpoint, Midpoint, Center, Intersection, Extension. Those are the things I want as running Object Snaps. Then I say OK. Now before I forget what I was doing here, the Aperture setting determines how close do I have to be to that line before it recognizes a running Object Snap. 10, to me, is a little too far away when you're doing complex drawings. So now, Aperture allows me to go a little closer. If I had the Aperture set to, say, 50, which is the um, largest you can set it for, now, I don't have to get very close to that before it starts collecting things. You can see, I think, 50 would be a big mistake. The other thing is that 1 would probably be a mistake as well, because with 1, you really have to be right on top of it before it's going to be selecting. Um, you know, three might be a, a good kind of compromise. You have to be fairly close to it, but you don't have to be right on top of it in order to select something. So that's what the aperture setting does. Now, as far as running os 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 OSnaps go, if I type OS mode, right now my OSnap setting is 5135. Hmm, you know, that's one other thing I like having on, and that's apparent intersection. So when I do the apparent intersection now, and I go to OS mode, now it's 6183. So I'll go back to my variable settings, Oz mode, 6183. 
and then I don't have to do an enter because there's already an enter there. This is one place people make a mistake in this all the time. They add something, press another enter, but they don't notice that there's already one below. So again, when you're done, collect this whole thing from the beginning, left click, come all the way down, drag it on as far as you can and make sure that you don't have any extra spaces at the end. Now we'll save that. So now I can go to a brand new drawing again. I can come down here and I can have my object snaps set to none. I can just go and clear all of them. Now when I run that script, not only does it set up layers for me and it set up a textile for me um, and it sets some variables, it also turns on object snap with the object snap variables that I like. So let's go back to the PowerPoint and let's go through the PowerPoint and your textbook and just review the um, details involved with creating scripts. So in the first place, one of the things I am doing here is indicating you can uh, do a drawing setup, the computer testing I just showed you, creating and showing slides. That is not as useful as it once was. In fact, with shade mode and 3D rendering and there are all kinds of ways now where the slides doesn't work, but it is possible to create a slide, which is just a raster based image of whatever is on the screen, as long as what's on the screen is vectors. That's, I think that's one of those things we don't really need to worry about. Startup scripts, once we have a script, we can actually assign that script to a, um, a desktop icon. And whenever we start AutoCAD, we can have it run that script. The multiple drawings updating, we're going to save for later on. A couple things. It has to be an ASCII text file. The extension has to be SCR. SCR is also the extension used by Windows for screensavers. And as a result, you have to make sure that you don't just double click on one of these files because it will try to, to use it as a screensaver if you do. So ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It just means a plain text file. That means you're going to want to use Notepad or WordPad or VLisp is the other one that I would use um, in order to do it so that you actually have a, um, a file that is a pure text file. All it requires is that you list AutoCAD commands and that you list the options as well as though you were typing them at the command line. It's a way, way faster typist than you are. You can imagine, again, if I go back to the AIA layer standards, how long it would have taken me to type those in. I'll show you how to run it automatically at startup. And then the batch processing, again, we're going to get to that later on. Let me go back to my desktop and let's take and make a copy of our AutoCAD or this could also be the ACAD LT as well. So I got a copy of that now. So I can go in here and I could right click and go and look at the properties of that. Look at the properties of that startup icon. And here where it says start in, let me just make sure you understand. Oh, I'm sorry, in target. If you up the target, <clears throat> when you pick this um, icon, what does it actually do? Well, it goes to locate the ACAD EXE file, wherever it's located, and then it fires it off. Now, it also fires it off with some switches, they're called. So the product, AutoCAD, language, but we can also put as a, as a switch in here, the switch B, which says go and run a script. Um, the reason it's not a switch S, but anyway, it is script a switch B. And then we would have to indicate um, a location. So I'm going to give it a simple location. I'm going to have to move one in. Um, so the switch is front slash B, but the uh, folder, this, um, the folder uh, division is going to be a backslash. So we'll go to Dan backslash, and I'll call it setup.scr and then put a space. Now I'm just going to save that. Now I'm going to go back to where I placed that to begin with. CAD management scripts and the setup script is right here and that's the one we just created. I'm going to make a copy of that and I'm going to put it on the C drive. The only reason I'm moving it is just because it was easier to type in because I had a shorter path. So I'm just going to now paste this in here. So it's in a folder called Dan on the C drive. 
Now, if I quit AutoCAD, we'll close all of the windows in AutoCAD, and I'm not going to bother to save anything because none of this stuff is worth saving. All right, so now I'm going to double click on this. It's going to start AutoCAD. Okay, so it did. It started AutoCAD. And you can see right off the bat it did something because it set Osmo to 6183. Now that it started AutoCAD, I have set up automatically some layers. And they're the layers that were in that script. I also have set up automatically Roman S as an annotative text style. And it also went through and it set up all those variables for me so that I could change them to whatever I wanted and that included setting up my running object snaps including a parent intersection. That is the way that we're going to use a script when you do the automated automation process when you're um, going through and updating drawings. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. It's right here. So um, yeah, a couple of special things. There's no user input permitted. In other words, you can't have it stop and ask you for something and give it the information and then have it use that information. For that, we have to do a programming language called Lisp, and we're going to get to that later. Variables cannot be used directly. Script must call a LPS program to use variables. Um, that's not quite true. Um, you notice I typed in, if you can type in a variable name and then a value at the command line, you can do them the same way I just did in that script. What we're talking about here is a function of set vars. And um, so we'll talk about that again when we get to the auto list function. You can put Lisp code directly into a script. And you can do that because you can type at the command line Lisp code. And you saw me do that in one of the earlier lectures where I said, let's go ahead and start app notepad. Oops which starts the application called Notepad in Lisp, and it starts with an open parenthesis and another parenthesis, and I said, let's find file, acad.pgp. So when I do that, it automatically opens, it came on my other screen, so I had to bring it over, it automatically opens that file. If I wanted that code to be in a script, I could stick it in there as a Lisp, con a Lisp line of Lisp code because you can type Lisp at the command line. So virtually anything you can type at the command line can be put into a script. I will say you can also create a command called PGP and have it go and find that for you. And I guess I made a command, but it has a mistake of some kind. That was when I was demonstrating something earlier. So the um, PowerPoint, go back to that. This works in all releases of AutoCAD and all releases of AutoCAD LT. It didn't used to work in LT, but the beauty right now of scripts is that that's the best programming language you have for working with AutoCAD LT. There are some special um, commands. If while a script is running, you press the backspace key, it'll stop the script. Typing resume at the command line resumes a paused script. Not a particularly big deal. But the reason that it's there, <clears throat> oh, and by the way, semicolon is a remark. You saw that as well. The reason it's there, though, is it's possible to run a script and have it go through and do a number of things. And one of those common things early on was showing a slideshow. And as a result, there's this delay function you can put in a script. So you put the word delay and then a number of seconds. It'll literally, I think it's seconds. It might be milliseconds. I can't remember. But you put a delay in and it'll just stop and wait for that period of time before going on to the next line in the script. Again, this is most useful back a long time ago before it was easy to make videos and computers when you were at a trade show and you wanted to have AutoCAD running and show a series of slides of things you've done in AutoCAD. Our script repeats the entire script so that when you're at that trade show it can just keep running and running and running. Functionally right now, I don't think there's much reason to use either one of those. I haven't since I used to make slideshows. Um, text editor, VLisp is a useful one because it's color coded, notepad, wordpad, those are the ones you want to use. You do have to be careful. Even in wordpad, you have to be careful. You save as a text file because it's possible, especially with quotation marks, very, it's a sort of annoying, but once in a while, even 
when I'm using Notepad, I'll find that I have smart quotes around something as opposed to dumb quotes. Smart quotes will not work in any program with a programming language. They have to be dumb quotes. VLisp is the way to go, although even VLisp, if you open up a file in VLisp, will actually see smart quotes sometimes as special characters that cannot run in a Lisp program. That's um, just the way it is. So, the, the uh, key things, whatever it's at the command line, try out the commands first. Use a space or a new line for enter. Let me show you what, what I mean by that. It would be possible in the script, like this script right here, it would be possible for this whole thing to be run like this. I go to, let's just do style for instance. I could bring that line up, put a space there, bring that line up and put a space there. Do the same thing with this. So in other words, a space is going to work the same as putting an enter in here. So all I'm doing now is putting everything on one line and it is possible to do that. So I could have reduced that to one line. That's actually kind of nice. It's easier to troubleshoot. The reason I didn't before was I just thought it'd be clearer at the beginning if you recognize that as you press enter in AutoCAD is the same time you're going to press enter here. But that line right there is going to do exactly the same thing. And since that's all I changed, I'm just going to look at that much of it. Now I'm going to save that again. And just to demonstrate that's true, I'm going to go back out and do a new drawing in AutoCAD. And I'm going to write script. And I'm going to go and run my setup script again. And it goes through and runs. It gets all the way to the end. That's a pretty good indication that it did what I wanted. But if I go to style, you'll see that it created exactly the same type of style with the obliquing angle and the width factor as we had before even though the format is different than it was before. So you could do that with anything. You, this entire script could be on one long line. It would be very hard to troubleshoot, though. So whatever works for you is fine. You could do that with layer as well. People often do. That way you can just kind of read down through it. So again, I could shorten this whole thing up by doing this. And I could stop there and let it continue like that. No spaces at the end of the lines, no extra spaces between commands, and no extra lines at the end of the file. Save it in, in text format, SCR extension. Yeah, put it where you can find it. <laughs> so, um, in fact, <clears throat> one nice way to do that is to just add the directory to the uh, search path and options where you have your scripts. That way AutoCAD can find them more e easily. Yeah, and then they've got a couple examples here. Okay, and then running them. What can't be included? What can be included? Yeah, why a script instead of a DWT file? A DWT file is a template file. And a template file should contain most of what you need. But the main thing is that you can run a script on an existing drawing. The other thing is there are some variables that are stored in the registry and not in the drawing file itself. Those variables, in fact, I'll show you a script where that's true. And um, those variables, because they're environmental variables. Oh, I don't have it here. Sorry, I can't show you a script where that's true. But one thing you can do: environmental variables are things like you know the plot, the, the path to a plotter, um, the path to to certain locations that you want something to happen to. So you know, hide system variables. A hide system printers, for instance, is a as a, a system variable or an environmental variable rather than an AutoCAD drawing variable. So those kinds of things can be changed with a script, but they cannot be saved in a drawing file. Uh, layer name settings for variables, text limits. You could make a whole dimension style if you wanted to. You just have to understand exactly how to do it. And here's an example of one. Here's another example. Set up script. And then the computer testing thing I just showed you. Yeah, let's take a look at that one. I said we were going to look at it, and we didn't. That's the bench test one. So let's um, <clears throat> let's open that up. That's the short one. Let's go to the long one. Okay, I'm opening this up in Notepad now. By the way, I keep talking about VLisp being something you could use. Let's go to VLisp in AutoCAD. I'm going to open that file in VLisp, and you'll notice that VLisp isn't really designed for scripts. It is designed for list programs. But you can open it up 
and you can use VLisp as an editor right from the AutoCAD command prompt, then it does give you a few advantages here. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at this. I think you can read that okay. Let me just change one thing to make it a little bit easier. I'm just changing my display percentage to 150. All right, so <clears throat> that is a little bit easier to see. Bring that down. All right, so here's what the um, here's what the program does. First thing it does is zooms all, um, and it does that. I'm not sure why it does that. There's a reason for that. I can't remember. I think you have to do something in order you could do something else. But that's what it does. It does a zoom. Does all. Then it goes to the time and it resets the timer. So right at the beginning, it's starting at zero for the timer. And then it gets out of time, and doing getting out of the time command requires that you press enter twice. And the time command, take a look at it in AutoCAD. If you type time, it comes up and it gives you some information. And it tells you what time it is, but it also has some options here. And one of those options is reset. But if you press reset and then press enter, you're still in the time command. So it's like the layer command where you then have to press enter to get out of the command itself. Um, so then I go to O-snaps and I clear my O-snaps. That's why, that's why I must have run that and that's why my O-snaps got cleared because I don't want any object snaps running when this thing goes. It probably would have been a better way to do that if I at the end reset my object snaps. That would have been a really good idea. So if I get here to time, if I had come down here and gone Osmode 6183, then I could have reset them after they got cleared. Then it creates a box, and a box of the 3D entity it creates a sphere at the same location, and then subtracts the sphere from the box, gets out, goes to the V point command, which just allows me to look at it from a different point of view, slices the object in half, does a 3D array, and here's where it goes 20, 20, 20. 20 items in the X, 20 in the Y, 20 in the Z, that was 20 times 20 times 20. When I first created this, I, that number was two, because if I'd done 20, it would have just crashed every computer I'd ever tried it on. So as computers get better and better, I just make those numbers bigger and bigger. You know, I remember I was so excited when I, was, when I went to four, so that it didn't take forever. I mean, the first time I ran this was just two, maybe four, I can't remember, but it would take several minutes to run these things. Um, then it goes through, sets up viewports in model space, and it sets up uh, viewports in paper space. I'm sorry, the note sets up viewports in model space and then goes to each one and sets up a different view using the UCS command. Then it goes to the tile mode, which puts you into paper space. There are a number of things you have to do to get out of the M view command when you get done. Um, erases anything that's already there. Goes through and, and does something called a solid profile. And these are all enters, which you have to do with the solprof command in order to ex execute the whole command. At the end, it goes back and issues a time command again, and now I've added Osmode to it as well. So that's um, another example of what you can do with scripts. And the PowerPoint goes on to show you how you can create slides, and I've got a, a script that creates uh, slides of a 3D object. Um, and it goes through and it creates the slides, and then you can set up another script that'll view the slides. So M slide makes a slide, and V slide saves a slide. Again, I don't think that's all that useful, but since I've brought it up, if you have something that you've drawn, no matter what it is, if you use the M slide command, it comes up and asks you where do you want to put it. We'll put it in documents, call it drawing two. That means now anytime I'm in AutoCAD and any other drawing, I can do V slide, which stands for view slide. Um, I can go to documents. And in documents, I can find my slide, which is drawing two slide, and it looks exactly like the screen look at the time I make the slide. Not as useful as it once was, but it's it's there. Startup switch is B. You add the name of the script after the switch in the DOS batch file or on the uh, desktop icon. What I did is to put it in the desktop icon. You saw me do that. So that's it. Your assignment is described for you on bench on uh, Brightspace. 
and I want you to, to really be careful when you're doing this and I'll make a point about all the work you're doing for this class test it thoroughly first because what I'm gonna do when I grade it I'm just gonna run it if it doesn't run you don't get a grade you get it back you have to do it again so try these things out as you're going through the whole process is what's important here not the actual um, script that you end up with but that you understand how to go about the process of designing creating coding running troubleshooting improving etc the kinds of things we're doing so when you are in a job at some point in the future this is the process you're going to use to try to solve those kinds of problems just going to end this with one reference to an email i got yesterday from an employer who said i won't give you the name but he said we hired so and so at your you know, when you uh, referred him he has been great absolutely great we want we want other we want somebody else that's like him could you please let us know and have uh, people send us their resumes the reason i say that is because student they're referring to took the cad management class and really struggled at the beginning and told me i just don't like programming i don't like this and i said well okay I, there's a lot of things i don't like that i have to do you have to do it so you know we worked in, together and he got better and better at it and uh, when he got hired he um, wrote me an email and said you really really just made me a hero my boss had a problem with a list program and I said well you want me to take a look at it? he said sure and I looked at it and went oh I know how to fix this I fixed it and gave it back to him and he was so impressed and so Ed, uh, the, the student was so pleased that he was able to do that the point I'm making here is trust me that working this out is useful to you and it really is a process and the process can be frustrating because although it went pretty smoothly when I just demoed it I make mistakes when I do this I have to go back and figure some things out that's part of the process of writing programs so that's it for scripts this is um, the easiest of the bunch that you're going to be using but it's also really picky about those spaces and the spaces at the end